all along, all along, always on my side. You've never gone. You've been with me all along, and you've been holding on, holding on for so long. My name is Audrey Fries. I'm 20 years old, and I'm a skier. I'm not totally sure where my story starts. I feel like a lot of my childhood and before becoming an adult uh, it's kind of dark or blurred out from my memories I guess but like most people you know there's a lot of struggles with growing up and coming into the real world basically I was living with somebody um, the woman that gave me life but couldn't love me and instead uh, this woman just loved mind-altering substances such as alcohol and just couldn't give any other attention to her own kids. Yeah, it was hard feeling like I was failing um, almost. I couldn't help this person. No one could help a person like that um, unless they're the ones helping themselves. I never told anybody really. I always kept everything to myself. I never wanted that to define me, even though it wouldn't, but I honestly was just embarrassed. I think the tipping point was just realizing that I've been bottling everything up for 10 years and I had to come to terms and tell myself that it's okay to be sad and it's okay to let other people know that you're sad and that really helped me a lot. Yeah, and through skiing, I guess I started traveling and finding a passion of exploring new places, meeting so many great people through this industry. And I'm always learning from friends or I'm teaching friends and just conversating and being real people throughout this sport. I think that's why I love it so much. It's just the connections, having other humans to connect with on such a deep level. I guess becoming an adult and realizing like living on my own and seeing how you can't run away from your problems in a sense and this stuff really does affect you in the long term. Um, and being able to talk about it with other people and expressing your feelings and not bottling up truly helped me and I honestly wish I went back and you know, instead of being secretive about my situation, just talk about it.
All right, my name is Bobby Sullivan. Um, I'm from Chelmsford, Mass. It's like 30 minutes north of Boston. As soon as I could walk, I was on a pair of skis, and I started racing until I was like 10 or 11, and I always was hitting little trees and little side jumps and stuff, and I got my first pair of twin tips when I was about 11, 12 years old, and yeah, here we are. Injuries are a huge part of skiing, any extreme sport, you know, any contact sport, anything like that. So, you know, with injuries come, you know, recovery and substances, things like painkillers and, you know, and a lot of downtime, which both of those can be super detrimental to someone's mental health. And, you know, that's kind of how things started with me. You know, I had an injury in high school. Uh, I broke my wrist and, you know, I was prescribed uh, painkillers and there was just so much downtime, you know, and I, and I was like, I thought that I would never get better. At the time, it was like all I knew was, you know, the painkillers were the only thing that made me feel better. And it just put me into a pretty dark spiral, you know, and believe it or not, skiing is kind of what, what started it. But also at the end of my injury, skiing was what brought me back and to get sober again. And you know, like, and it gave me something like a purpose and it gave me something to like, like a physical outlet, you know like exercise and something creatively too you know and i think that was super super good for my mental health you know recovery for people is not always a straight line it's not like it happens once and you're over it you know so i still every single day you know i make the decision i have to make the decision not to use some not to you know get into substances and you know and skiing is has been there for me you know to have something to go do every day, something that I love, and something to be sober for, you know? Like, without it, I, I I don't know, you know, obviously I love my family and the people around me, but this community is so tight-knit, and you know, they're super, they are super supportive. Substances in the ski communities, like, it's definitely really prevalent. It's a party culture, you know? Almost like every day out there is like a celebration. I will say that my everyone that I've been surrounded by, when I say no to a beer, or no to something else. They are so supportive, they never push, you know, and they're, it, everyone's super excited for me, and you do recover. That's not it for an injury, you know? It, it doesn't end there. That's not the end of your life. You know, things get better, okay. absolutely.
Step out in the rain Whoa Pull me to the other side Step out of the way this time Can you help me fly away? Hi, my name is Forrest Coots. I'm from a small little town at the base of Mount Shasta in Northern California, and this is my story. I had a little brother, his name was Brooks, who took his own life when he was 17. Um, he was a saw junior in high school. Over first love, and it happened in the spring, just kind of like now, and uh, he just couldn't get past what had occurred. My brother was extremely passionate about skiing at his, it, when this all happened. Like, I think he, it was like, he went skiing the day, you know, that after school he ripped up and like shredded, he was a train park and like a park skier and like, he shredded that day and then came home and did, you know, and then my mom found him, you know, and you know, there's like two distinct chapters of my life. Like there's one, there was three Coots kids and now there's my sister and I. Uh, and once you, you know, you've seen the grieving and felt the grieving of a lost family member, like, your decision making kind of changes and, you know, this accident has brought me back to skiing. I just am kind of bummed on, you know, the person he would have become and the adventures we could have gone on as, you know, two brothers, you know, he'd be in his mid-30s now and just the person he would have become. That's the thing that makes me like most sad when I think back. Like that's the thing that kind of tears open the scar is like, so I'm, you know, like I kick myself like so much that if I would have just called and checked in, just, you know, we would have shot the shit for a couple minutes. Like, would it have reversed course? I mean, but I don't know. So I think in an ideal, perfect world, how we address mental health is we break down the all the stigmatism against it. As a society, we can just be a lot more kinder in realizing that, you know, we don't know everyone's backstory. You don't know what happened to this person 10 years ago and to why this, you know, thing triggers, like just being, uh, you know, open to everyone's experiences, you know, it helps define who we all are. The most successful trip is the one where you're driving to your driveway after it. Coming home is number one, and so, that's what defines success. Like, of course, I'd love to have skied these things and these grand adventures I've gone on, but you know, it's like as cliche as it is, like, it's you know, it's the journey, it's not the destination. There's a lot of meaning in that.
Chapman, this is Lucius and Alta, and I am a skier from Salt Lake City, Utah, and this is my story. My first several years of skiing, I was in a not great relationship. I really kind of dropped into this journey. I developed an eating disorder as a way to have control within my life where I felt so out of control. Really harsh depression and anxiety that would kind of come in waves. Being in the ski community throughout this mental health journey has um, been really helpful. At Alta, I have so many friends that are very supportive of where I'm at. So they don't expect me to be in this perfection zone. They expect me to show up how I feel. And that's so helpful. Um, and on top of that, I have friends that, like my family lives in Australia. And so I have friends that really support me in the way that my family would if they were here, and I don't think I would have made it through without them. My mental health is full of so many waves that I know that I've made it over some humps, and I know I have some humps to still make it over. Um, but I'd say the driving force in the darkest moments was my dog, because I had to get up, I had to get out of bed, I had to go on a walk. Um, the dogs were relying on me, and they have brought so much joy in these moments that I didn't expect to find them. You know, I think it can be really scary to talk about struggling with these things because then people don't want to take you seriously, don't want to believe that you can be a good athlete. Um, and so being able to talk about the reality of the mental health while still showing what you do as an athlete. I, looking at athletes that I look up to, it's not because they're the most hardcore skier out there. It's because they're approachable, and they're genuine, and they want to tell a story. If I was talking to 12-year-old me, I would tell me to believe myself more. I think there's so much um, accidental gaslighting, um, you know, feeling like I was just being a drama queen, or a prima donna, or creating issues where there really weren't any, and I think what I really needed to do was learn to just listen to myself. And um, I think that's really the first step to then being able to share that and ask for help. Just for fun, I had one friend, now there's none. I made the devil run, I broke so many bones, but none of them were ever my own. They were an army, I was alone, I broke so many bones.
I'm bad, I'm bad as... My name is Jack Clark, and this is my story. Yes, it was back in fall of 2014 where um, any sort of mental health um, or, you know, mental illness had ever been brought to my radar uh, or during freshman year of college and uh, sort of over a multitude of things, you know, I triggered a my first manic episode uh, as a result of being bipolar disorder. When you go through something like that, it's it's hard to recognize it yourself until you have other people tell you, you know, you're acting strange. So the thing that helped me get through it was uh, the biggest thing was time. Talking about it, talking about it with a professional, uh, getting, you know, put on a medication that you know was tailored and to my specific case and then sticking to that medication uh, skiing definitely puts me in that realm of you know feeling on top of the world you know it's my favorite place to be is out in the mountain you know the adrenaline rush taking cliffs hitting jumps it, it just puts me into my happy place and it honestly balances me uh, throughout the winter because, uh, you know, it's where I'm truly happy and uh, it's easy in the winter to get bogged down and stay indoors. You know, your brain can start just running wild and, you know, anxiety builds up. You, you know, you really can never know too much about what's going on in someone's head. Um, I would, uh, I would say to you know, just keep your head up. It's gonna be a wild ride, regardless. So, grab on and hold on. Beautiful. <laughs> Every individual has their own kind of mental health journey. Um, people struggle and people battle with a lot of things. Uh, my name is Jed Waters. Uh, I'm originally from Sun Valley, Idaho, and I do freestyle skiing. Um, yeah, I mean, I got into skiing from a pretty young age growing up in a small mountain town. Um, my dad put me on skis as soon as I could walk. I've definitely had moments where, you know, I've been down in the gutters and like trying to find a way out is like, pretty hard sometimes it's hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel um, like to shine a light on a specific point for me it's like right out of high school um, I graduate personally I graduated high school when COVID hit so I was kind of like stuck at home like didn't really know what I was gonna do with the rest of my life like I 
just sat there just like damn I have no clue what's about to happen like definitely broke down and like kind of came to a realization like I don't know what I'm gonna do like all things considered going on in the world like and got to a pretty low point at home kind of sitting by myself and like people battle every day with like mental health like people sometimes are down people sometimes are up like just kind of realizing too like noticing your peers are down or like just being there for everyone is like the biggest thing too skiing for me is just like an outlet to express myself and like obviously it sounds super cliche like everyone is gonna say it but like skiing is just a place and a community and a thing to do that just like frees your mind like you can just like express yourself and like free yourself in a sense like I don't think about anything else but skiing when I'm skiing and then like when it's done it's like oh, like got to deal with the real world shit now that's just an outlet and a community to help everything that you have problem wise so but yeah shout out to the, everyone who cares so especially big shout out again to mom and dad who always help me out My name is Sarah Dolan. I'm from Seattle, Washington, and this is my story. It's not always easy being a woman in the ski industry. <laughs> I think there's a lot of stereotypes, and it's also super male-dominated. This summer, I was sexually assaulted, and that was by someone that I trusted. Well, shock. Trial and denial really affected my mental health because those were all things where I doubted myself. I really lost a lot of who I was. Um, it, it changed me. I had to kind of rewire my brain because <laughs> um, I I didn't. It's like I didn't know myself anymore. Denial. Uh, like I didn't really believe that what happened to me was true. I blamed myself. I felt really bad for the other people who were there that night. And um, I really just blamed myself and felt super guilty. That was the biggest thing was that guilt that I had, even though I, I there was no guilt to be had. Um, so I think I took that and tried to help other people because I thought I needed to. Probably the biggest thing was super anxious all the time. I think it really affected me not being able to trust people the way that I used to. Um, it's super isolating as well. You, or I kind of felt like no one understood me and it's hard to go to anyone um, 
and feel like they would understand. So lonely, anxious were the two big ones that I felt. It's uncomfortable, honestly, like having to go to someone and say, not just are you all right, because that's hard to ask, or um, just being there for someone and trying to understand them as best you can. The number one thing was having a really supportive friend who made me realize what happened was bad. And she's the reason why I took myself to the hospital. And she's the reason why I realized I had to start caring for myself <laughs> and thinking about myself. So that was huge, is having a friend or just anyone that you can talk to and will give you what you need to hear. Um, <laughs> skiing teaches you how to have fun and how to work hard. You, or for, for me, I've learned that you push your boundaries sometimes too far. And sometimes really good things come out of that too. Um, it's a two-way street sometimes and it's a learning curve. And skiing helps you motivate yourself. And I'd say that really brought me back like fully to myself. That's what helped me heal. And so this winter, that was that was key. Tough things happen, <laughs> and you have to be really strong to get through them. And you don't even know that you're strong until you have to deal with them. So just believing in yourself and having a really strong core is important. When you let those words fly out You really reach for that But I bit down, held my tongue You really went deep for that I tried to tell you but you Oh,
My name is John Padilla. I'm a skier from Bozeman, Montana, and this is my story. On February 5th of 2019, I got the phone call that nobody ever wants to receive. Your brother Jack has had an accident. Jack had attempted suicide and was in the hospital on life support. Jack was 15 years old, stunningly handsome, and incredibly athletic and smart. But most of all, he had more empathy than anybody else. He spent nine days in the hospital fighting for his life, and ultimately on February 14th of 2019, his short life came to an end. You are not alone in your struggles, that you can reach out, text a friend, call a parent, have that conversation, and check in on your friends too. Remember that Jack was the person who smiled the most and that you would never know. We have a duty as a society to look out for our impacts because you better believe that they're looking out for us. And I promise you it's a lot easier to have a conversation than it is to bury your brother. I often get the question, what got you through the loss of your brother?
this dark mother, mother, I'm here In the now, I'm about to send the hell In spirit, you're no longer prisoner to the school size kingdom Your skis!
God.